Good morning. Uh, there was no sunrise. We had clouds again uh, this morning, so we're, we're up pretty late. We had a torrid night. It was very, very windy. We're in a sheltered spot, but the wind still whip round and it buffets the tents and they sort of tap on your head. And of course you get the, the whistling sound of the wind. So I had maybe four or five hours sleep, which is uh, okay. Um, Keith, who is in this tent here, he is uh, he's staying back to uh, have a rest today and, and just chill out. I think he's found the preceding days uh, plenty hard enough, so he's he's going to have a rest. But Jesus, who's with me here, um, is going to come on the hike. I reckon we've got about six hours total walking to do today to get up this mountain, Ben Anoin. We've got uh, pretty light packs, just the camera gear really, and, and some warm clothing and of course uh, some food. Um, and it's about 10 o'clock, 10.30 now. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll get up on top of the mountain in time for the sun to swing round a bit so that we're not shooting into the sun in the direction of the mountains of Torridon. Um, and then if the weather continues to look good, um, then we might hang around later. And I mean, of course, it would be ideal if we could have a sunset up there. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It could be quite cold because the wind is, is very strong today. Um, we're just in good shelter here. So uh, I'm quite excited though to get up there. I've never been up Ben Anoin before. Um, in fact, it's the only mountain in the area that I haven't been up. So uh, that novelty is, is quite exciting for me in itself. We've reached the top of Ben Anoin and it really does have a fantastic view. Um, it's a little bit hazy at the moment and as you can see there's not much sunshine so it's difficult to shoot although there's maybe quite an ominous atmosphere over in that direction which is probably worth uh, playing with. Um, but it's been a long hike to get up here, it's taken us about three hours um, although we haven't gone that fast to be honest. Uh, and uh, we've got some time up here to see if the light changes. It doesn't look hugely promising. Um, the weather's all coming from this direction. This is where the wind is coming from. Um, so I would imagine, um, having looked at the forecast as well, that we're not going to see a huge change in the weather. But there's been the odd burst of sunlight coming through, um, as you saw from the preceding video. So uh, maybe the sun will come back, but I do think that haze is a bit of a problem. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot a uh, number of wide views, maybe as video clips, and then I'm going to talk over what I think of the view and how I would break them down from a compositional perspective, just assuming ideal light. So kind of just taking 
people through the motions with shooting mountain views and how you what might arrange the mountains and then discuss that with a voiceover that hopefully won't be too long um, and then if the light comes good or if I if I take a photo that I'm really happy with then I'll share that too. We did actually get some really good conditions on this afternoon but I am going to talk you through the compositions anyway so starting uh, here with this view of Bouchevin um, the problem here is that all of the lines essentially run in the same direction and although they're diagonal they don't converge in any way um, and so there's no real perspective there and everything feels very flat which of course isn't helped by the light and if you had some really nice side light on this scene then I'm sure it could look beautiful as is um, but in this flatter light it certainly needs a foreground and I did have a hunt around to see if I could find some foregrounds and particularly when the rain came through which you'll see in a second um, but there just wasn't really anything up there and, and often these uh, mountains do have great Torridonian sandstone structures on them um, but not in this particular location but nevertheless as the rain came through I did get this shot which uh, I think is quite quite nice from an illustrative perspective not one for the portfolio but uh, still a nice scene to photograph so now if I pan my camera around again then we start looking towards Ben Allegan here we do have really strong focal points um, and there's certainly some potential for foreground interest even in the view with these pools at the bottom so the obvious decision would be to try to frame in such a way that you can incorporate both of those aspects and there may be a way to make that work but for me the problem is that the mountain and those lakes below just have a large empty area between them and so there's a bit of a disconnect in, in the landscape there's no real relationship between that central mountain Ben Allegan and those pools beneath um, so you end up just shooting a, a tighter view to incorporate this mountain on the left which is called Ben Jerig um, and I, I did actually just shoot a, a quick time lapse of that um, just because the clouds were moving in quite an interesting way um, but again it really does need the light to make that work. Panning around to the left again so Ben Jerig is now on the right edge of the frame and we're looking into yet more spectacular mountains. This is uh, Ben A on the left and Liech at the back there um, with the flanks of Ben Jerig beneath it. Um, so there's quite a few ways that you could potentially break this down but I tend to think about this in terms of where the edges of the frame need to lie so on the right hand side you could probably either put them more or less where I have there um, maybe a little bit in or otherwise where Liech runs into Ben Jerig that feels like a natural place to put the edge of the frame uh, on the left hand side you can actually see um, a peak just creeping in on the left there I, I wouldn't leave that there it's a bit distracting I want to move the edge of the frame back in. Um, there are some really interesting features in this view aside from the mountains of course there's this rather beautiful river um, running in at the bottom and these uh, small lochens down in the valley there so this scene really has a lot to offer and I started to get really excited when the rain started to appear. Things changed fast in the mountains because uh, no sooner had I recorded that vlog than these showers started appearing so I've had an awesome, awesome time shooting the rain coming out in front of these iconic mountains in Torridon. It really has been, uh, been good fun. I'm pretty sure I've got a good shot up here. I guess I'll talk through them afterwards. But um, these ridges just make great silhouettes. You've got this rain pouring down, makes amazing structure and gives the scene a real sense of depth and drama. Uh, so really happy with what I've shot up here. That ended rather abruptly because as you can see the rain was coming for me but I did take two shots prior to that video clip that you saw there starting with this panorama which I think is maybe the better of the two images because the rain is just starting to come in so it's providing some real atmosphere and drama but it's light enough that you can see through to the mountains and those amazing crags and tonally I think this balances really well left to right. Whereas if we look at this second image, we've got far more drama coming in from the rain. So initially, maybe this is a, a more spectacular image, particularly with that rain structure coming through. Uh, but I think I just prefer that the, the subtlety to, to a degree of that uh, first image. But certainly very pleased with both of these. And uh, nice to put the horizon smack bang in the middle. Um, I do think it works in this particular case. 
But as the rain passed through, we did have this incredible rainbow appear and that mountain in the back there on the right, that's called Slioch. So the um, natural goal was to try to bring those two elements together. And um, I, I shot this thinking that maybe it would work as a panorama. Um, I, I don't think it really does. It just feels a bit too narrow, the, the rainbow or the center of brightness of the rainbow and the mountain feel too far apart. Um, so it doesn't quite mesh together right. And wider like this, you have this huge area of open hillside. And uh, I think other photographers might actually um, get on with that perfectly fine. Um, but I've got a slightly different aesthetic, not, not a better aesthetic necessarily, but I'm certainly very very uh, particular about that sort of thing. So uh, instead I just hung around and, and keep, kept an eye on the rainbow um, to, to see what would happen. And there was this moment where the light started to break up a bit and so did the rain and it produced this absolutely stunning pattern. Um, so I shot a much longer lens image looking into the, the distance there and uh, I far prefer this shot even though uh, it doesn't include that prominent mountain Slioch. And after that, the light didn't look like it was going to improve and we still had three hours to get back to the tent. So we decided better to, to do that during the daylight and we headed down first to this rather nice bothy, which sadly was closed a number of years ago due to uh, misuse. So a bit of a pity, but still uh, cool to drop in on that location. And then we headed back along the pretty fast track from the Bothy. Um, of course, the sun did pop out and uh, we were sort of ruining our misfortune, but then a rainbow appeared in the distance just to perfectly cap off the day. So this is uh, angelic, nicely framed um, through the gaps in the mountains there. So a really nice way to, to finish the day and uh, actually finish this particular trip. Um, and coming up, I've got my adventure in that area in the Fisherfields uh, to share with you. So that'll be coming in the next few weeks.